do you have an ending in mind? I do. <laughs> and please tell us, tell us what it is. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just don't even read it. Just, just let me tell it, tell you everything. Um, let's just say that it's kind of, well, it's not I, about the it's, ending. It's about the story, man. It's about the journey. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> read those pages. Jacob Rundle, author of Augur of Shadows, book one of the Destin series, joins me today on the Uniweb interview show. I'm your host, Matthew Whiteside, joined again by Jacob Rundle. Jacob, how are you doing today, man? I'm fantastic. How are you? Doing awesome, dude. Uh, thanks so much for uh, spending the time this Saturday to uh, speak with me. I do appreciate it. So, you wrote Augur of Shadows. When did this, uh, when did this book come out? Uh, so it was it was released February 26th, um, but I've had this story, well, like the idea of the story for a really long time, and it wasn't really until I started doing book reviews, <clears throat> and I read all genres. You know, I'm I'm an unbiased book reviewer, and yeah. honestly, not I'm, I'm not bashing anybody that writes a certain particular pre and post apocalyptic type story, but I was just tired of seeing kind of the same thing, you know, it was, you know, it was a zombie thing or there was a disease or, you know, you know, the quote unquote, you know, like a bomb or something. Yeah. And it always kind of led the same way, you know, and I I just got tired of it. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to actually write what I would want to read. And Mm. then that's what really sparked me to start writing Augur of Shadows. So what is, isn't an Augur a type of farm? Equipment, farming equipment. <laughs> so that, that, that's 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 one thing. Uh, and okay. that, an auger actually, well, the way that I use it is actually a ceremonial position in very old civilizations where it's not it's not a normal seer. It's somebody who actually communicates with that civilization's deities. So it's not okay. just a prophet. It's somebody who's who who's more than that. So they're they're like a liaison between two different two different uh what am I trying to think of like, like two different the, yeah like the gods and the the people it's he okay he or she or they are like I don't want to say intermediaries because it really is like you know when you read the stories of Apollo and right you know and his prophets like they receive visions and messages but an augur somebody who actually you know on the astral kind of metaphysical level Uh interacts with that spirit or deity or whatever that's really cool so so how so what happens in this book so augur shadows it's a post-apocalyptic book um right does you do you have a time frame set in this or is this like an alternate universe type of time timeline so so really book one is i i like to classify as a pre-apocalyptic just because it yeah. so it sets the foundation of you know henry and the, his two friends and mm-hmm. they are burdened with this responsibility to literally bring forth the apocalypse and this is where my twist is different i'm i'm using the apocalypse as kind of like a positive thing in the <laughs> <Woo-hoo>! <laughs> yeah because like that's Dude. like like I was saying earlier, that's kind of like it was always used the same way. Like, oh, it was a negative thing. But my twist is like, what if it? What if you had to do it? What yeah. if, like, within those events, whether you watch TV, movies, or whatever, but what if in doing this something happens, or you need something to happen for there to actually be a future? And what if mm-hmm. the alternative was pure nothingness, like? I mean, have, if you actually sit and think about, you know, this is also very existential in a way. Like, have yeah. you ever thought about what nothing is? You can't really, the human mind can't really cross it. You know what I mean? Like, you can't, like, yeah. that whole, it can freak people out. So, these kids, and I call them kids because, they're, I mean, they're teenagers, they're kids, are okay. told that they have to do this. Like, there is this primordial evil that even the current gods 
I think as my story, there's all different cultures because this event will affect everybody. It's not just Christians. It's not just people who are atheists. It's literally an evil that has existed before time, ripping its way through the cosmos and just devouring everything. It doesn't care who you are or what you are. It'll go after, again, God's. It doesn't matter what it is. It just wants to eat everything. For pure um, nothingness, there's no, there's like, there's no rhyme or reason for it. Okay. And so, they are told that you have to. The, the only way to prepare or to ensure the future uh-huh. is to bring forth like a, a cataclysmic event, because within that process, certain things happen to help them. And I say help them because I mean I won't give it away, but there's just a possibility. I'm not saying that the series will have a happy ending because it's, it's not, that's not really realistic if you think about it right. because of, because of the, su- the subject matter. There's going to yeah. be lost. <laughs> I mean, uh, let's, the let's happy keep it 100. The happiest book I've ever read. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and exactly. And even a lot of dystopians, like, this event happens and now this world is very, like, um, what is that series? Uh, Hunger Games. Like, mm-hmm. It's it's dark, but there's still you know like happiness. But what if like what if it wasn't that way? Like right. let's let's try to keep it realistic. If this this horrible event affects everybody, happens, there's still a possibility that the ending will not be happy. Yeah. So um, these kids are basically they're also guided by other I say otherworldly beings because I include you know. Uh, 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 not creatures, but um, characters from like the Haitian culture, the okay. the Latin culture. Yes, the you know the Christian culture. Because again, this event will affect everybody. It's not just a certain sect of, of people, right? And so within this process, they have to do certain things, and each book will basically be like one big task with subplots. Mm. Uh, it's aiming to be four books. I say that okay. now because I'm, I'm only on book two, but it's just, you know, how a story just develops on its own. Yeah, definitely. So you've, the, the, the whole premise of the story sounds fantastic, man. It's, it's a really cool take on it. Um, I can't imagine being these kids and having like to, <laughs> like, hey, hey, we're going to need you guys to end the world. How, do, <laughs> like, how does that even I mean, there's got to be there's got to be some things that they they're so they're trying to set up events basically mm-hmm. to lead towards this cataclysmic event. Mm-hmm. Exactly, and yeah. that's and it's not like because I have this you know this quote unquote destiny now is they they still have to deal with like the the, the mundane. Um, mm. Like Henry is a 17 year old boy who just lost his father who. Yeah. And yes, my main character, Henry, is dealing with his sexual identity. However, okay. and this is where my story is, is different, is that my character is gay, but it's not the point of the story. It's just it's a facet of his personality, of, of his being. Right. So he, he lost a parent. He moved across the country. His mom's going, you know, she's dealing and he's dealing with that and now he has this on top of it it's like the yeah. pressure from all these different angles and the other the other characters are the same thing they're dealing with you know elena the female character she was abandoned by her family those mm-hmm. feelings and emotions don't go away just because you have this other big bigger burden yeah so, well it's interesting like how do because i feel like if if i was tasked with ending the world for a good cause <laughs> you know yeah. like i feel like everything else would just kind of necessarily be put on the back burner for a while and <laughs> i say for a while but it's like potentially mm. <laughs> forever um how do you go about because that seems like that seems like it could be a difficult thing to to manage to keep you know um interested right like to mm-hmm. keep people like why the heck is he worried about this like dude you got this giant universe ending being trying to devour everything why are you worried about this stupid thing how do you go about writing that kind of um so that that is kind of one of the difficult things um good thing i'm anal retentive in the fact that 
<laughs> so my idea, be- yeah. So my yeah. So my idea is that in order be- because when they're guided by these otherworldly beings like angels or whatever, uh-huh. not even not even they know exactly what's going to happen because and this will come into play i have a prequel plan for the series as well that everything has its own time and that's including every you know all the the different religions gods and whatever that they haven't always been here there was a time before the quote-unquote big bang so yeah so they don't even know exactly what's going to go on and so they're always stressing the importance of this event but at the same time they have to also maintain their hold on their own humanity because they don't know how it's going to be after her. Like you have mm-hmm. to remember where you come from. And the only way to do that is, and it's kind of sucky. And I feel like I torture my characters a little bit, but they have, they have to remember where they <laughs> like Henry has to remember that he lost his father. Yeah. And Elena has to remember that her family abandoned her because, you know, she was always gifted and I won't say how, but it, I mean, yeah. it's obviously the story, but they felt that their daughter was kind of a monster and the fact that she could make things happen. Wow. And that's, it's, it's, it's a very, it does occur in, in that, in the Latin culture, because I, I had sev- sensitivity readings throughout this process. And I wanted to make sure that that was a real thing. And that's also kind of makes her remember her humanity. Yep. Like she's not this, I mean, she is this all, all powerful, you know, 18 year old kid i guess but at the same time like she still has like her family abandoned her because of this so these these kids have powers then they're uh well yeah so yeah so henry is because they they still need i mean this is the fancy factor um that you sort of need you know a little extra a little extra oomph i like to say um yeah because like i am I do. I am drawn more to fantasy stories, so fantasy stories tend to have some kind of supernatural or, you know, magical element to it. And so right. Henry, so like the the story starts with Henry having these dreams, but they're they're way way too realistic because when he starts waking up from them, he starts having you know like scratches or burns because they're not just dreams; they're actual premonitions and i did my own twist to what an actual premonition is and and um elena is like i said gifted with th- making things happen and Simeon, who is a 17 year old haitian exchange student yeah and because i have a lot of history with you know i have haitian god family and how they view you know things like this and their culture it's not the same as ours so He's a little more, I like. I guess I could say, you know, for people that don't know Haitian culture, a little more like witch doctor, but mm-hmm. not saying that he's like raising the dead or anything. He's more of like a okay. medium type person. So he, he can like, he can also communicate on the other side, but not in the same sense as Henry. Okay. If that, make, if that makes any sense. So they have these like these abilities yeah. that help them in this process. Yeah, I can see how premonitions and speaking with the dead would help in this scenario. I mean, he, so is he, he? He's able to. He it doesn't like come to him. He just comes to him whenever it comes to him, right? Like he can't like touch something and see things. Is that kind of premonitions? Uh, so no, initially no. It's it's really of more of like when something is important to know, okay. <clears throat> like it, it'll come to him. But throughout the story, things he, his ability. And it's kind of it's a very important story. So it's I'm just gonna say it starts changing. Okay. And um, gotcha. again, that'll be more explained throughout the series. On the cover, he's got like stuff on his. Is that like glowing yeah. lines? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> and that was the fun part with my cover artist, because I, I was like, I want him to. I call them glyphs, which is just like just symbols on his face. Right. And I wanted I wanted it to be you know unrecognizable. I didn't want it to be a language that you know we would know on Earth, I guess. Right. And so the cover, like once you read the story, you'll understand that that's kind mm-hmm. of the other thing about him is, and again, that goes along with being an auger is that priest like entity, and that mm-hmm. that is how he communicates with all these other worldly beings through the glyphs. Through the glyphs, yeah. 
Awesome. Dude, this is so cool, man. I love this kind of stuff, um, these kind of books. Uh, like, I'm a huge fan of Fifth Wave. I don't know if you've ever read that book or anything yeah. like that, but like a huge fan of it. It's, I mean, it obviously, it's not the same, but similar elements. Um, so you, you've already you've finished up uh, book two. You're working on book two? Yeah, I'm, I'm in the process of writing it right now. It's, it's a lot. I mean, I'll be honest, it's a little more difficult only because not that I'm stressing about it being like a number one bestseller or anything like that. It's the fact that I have them all um, outlined, but mm -hmm. the way as I'm writing book two, it's, there are all these other possibilities and characters that I would want to introduce that would be really cool because, again, you just you don't normally see these characters. Like, I want, mm -hmm. I want it to be consistent in the fact that each book is – it builds on the previous and it's, it's going to be bigger. How can I make it bigger? Yeah. And so that's what's, it's taking me a little longer because I'm like, Oh, I could add that character. And that would be really cool because nobody knows about that character. Yeah. And it would add a really cool element. That's awesome. Um, I, I was going to ask you about that. The, so do you already have the ending planned out or is it, because you said you had the three books outlined, right? Yeah. Well, I have four. Yeah. You have four books outlined. Yeah. Um, do you have an ending in mind? I do. <laughs> and please tell probably... us tell us what it is. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just let me read it. Just just let me tell it tell you everything. Um, let's just say that it's kind of, well. It's not I, about the ending. It's about the story, man. It's about the journey. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Read those pages. Um, pages. Yeah. My my goal is to have it. I want it to be unexpected. And I've had a lot of people when they've read book one that the ending, they're like, oh my God, I didn't even see that. And that, that's what I want. That out of everything, I don't, that's the reaction that I want. You can hate everything else. That's fine. <laughs> but I'm more concerned with like, is the ending, did you expect it? And, you know, nine, like 95% of people are like, I did not expect that. And I'm like, yes. So for book, for book one, people were like, what the hell? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, that's a tricky thing though because you can do it to a point where people are like nope <laughs> forget it right yeah, and, I, and it I, totally yeah. ruins the book for them yeah i, I i'm have, speaking from experience here i've <laughs> like <laughs> I, it's okay i've had one person she was like i didn't expect it ending and initially i was like oh great I was real excited. She's like, I hated it. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't, I don't understand why. And she told me why. I was like, okay, well, I kind of understand that. And, you know, if you're going to write anything and you're going to release it, people need to understand that not everyone's going to like it. And, that, and that's yeah. okay. You're going to get those one or two stars. Trust me, it sucks. <laughs> I, got, yeah. I got a two-star review. I totally understand. And she explained why i was like okay well i can't fight with you that's your opinion but um it's you just you just got to keep going well it's that is really important i just started doing book reviews too and it's like we all want a five-star review mm -hmm. and we all crave that validation that we're the greatest writer in the history of the written word mm -hmm. but in reality if if we could just you know cool our jets a little bit and realize that sometimes a one or two star review is the absolute best thing that could ever happen to a new writer because the well if it's a good one or two star review if it's just like you're i hate you as a human being one yeah. star you're like oh, well yeah. how i become i guess i should become a better human <laughs> <laughs> yeah like but, uh i didn't like the fact that your main character is gay i was like okay well that's your problem that's not mine like right <laughs> They're like, you didn't advertise it as an LGBTQ book. I'm like, it's not an LGBT. It's not a. It's right. not an LGBTQ no, focused novel. That's right. why I did not put it under that category. Right. Like, I'm like, you're. Yeah, you're it's missing like the point it's like it. having it's like having a fantasy book and there's like a romance in it. You don't call it a romantic novel. It's a fantasy book and there's just so <laughs> happens to be romantic things going on inside of it. Yeah. 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 They're like, she was like, I can't believe you did that. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that is your own insecurity, and I'm not going to get into a, a conversation as to why you are that way. That's between you, ma'am. Like, but well, thank you for That's reading cool. my book. <laughs> yeah, thanks for your purchase. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'm like, I don't care. I mean, no, it it, really it, did, it definitely can be tough though. Um, 
but it's it, how did you feel when you first got that was that the two star review you're talking about yeah when you first got it what was the feeling like oh i i hated it i was yeah. i was upset because you're right i was upset and here's another reason why um my thing is if you're going to leave even if you're going to leave a two star i hate it when people rate something on goodreads and then they don't say anything yeah like I had to approach her, which makes, I don't know, like, why? Like, if you don't, if you gave me a two-star, that's fine. Okay. Tell me why. Like, you can, right. if you don't want to look like a fool, then you can still put something like, I didn't like it because of the world building. Okay, that that's fine. That's not going to help. But you need to say, what about the world building? So when people do leave, like you were saying, a good and bad review, it's important for when you do leave a review, you ha- you should leave something that the the writer can take away to better yeah. his or her next piece. Right. If you're just gonna give me a two star and I'm gonna have to like hound you about it, like yeah. <clears throat> that isn't helpful. Then you're just being well, I'll choose a different word. Then you're just being difficult. <laughs> it, it's it's not helpful. It makes you look like a fool. It doesn't make me look like a fool. I mean, everyone else is at least saying something. I, I got a three-star review, which isn't a bad review, from Sarah Bailey. And she was like, bam, 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 bam. I was like, okay, cool. Like, I will take that under consideration. Like, yeah, I saw one of your I saw one of your reviews, um, and I think it was a three-star. I think it was the only one I saw on Amazon. It was a three-star. But it was like the amount of information they gave you and the stuff was, like, fantastic. To, it's all, like, stuff that's – easily worked on and can yeah. be approached and as is starting starting out as writers and like for a first novel like that's to be expected and that's so helpful you know it's like i would want that i tell people like I, kick me in the nuts if you have to i like i'll take it because i want to get better it's not i don't want to just like i don't want my friends to pat me on the back as i yeah. walk down the street looking like an idiot you know like yeah. <laughs> tell me what the i need to know yeah. That's and that that's that's something else for other writer or like new writers is your friends and family are gonna say that they love it. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're just and and that's fine, but you have to still have something in your head. Like not everyone's gonna feel that way. Don't feel bad about your right because like after I saw that two star, I was like, oh, even I was like, God, was my was my book that bad? Mm-hmm. But then after I spoke with her, I was like, that's not it's not necessarily me. It's right. more her, so. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I got a two star as well, and they said I was too cynical, and that was I was like, all right. I mean, <laughs> they didn't like cynicism, so <laughs> I didn't know I was, but it's just it's like not every book is for every person, and I understand that. Um, and that's something we all have to grow from. And are so are you taking are you taking that because the book just came out in February of this year, right? Yes. It just came out. You've got you've already got a lot of good feedback. Um, so let's talk about how the book has done so far. I mean, you you said obviously the cover art is great. We talked a little bit before um, we started recording about uh, the person you use for your cover art and your media and stuff like that. How has when you, when you first put the book out? Like, what was the marketing strategy? What was the book release like for you? Um, did I'll you have you one? Oh no, I <laughs> did. Oh. <laughs> I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you the tea. Um, so I did, I did for months, I did tons of re- like marketing research. Yeah. Uh, I was asking people on book, you know, book to YouTube writer to or author to, I should say. And like, I would ask everybody, what did you do? Like, what's the best way to do it? Yeah. Now I, you know, ideally everybody thinks that they're going to have a number one bestseller on their release day. It can happen. I hit number four, but my, my book was in, in a, nice, I'm not going to say it's a difficult category, but there's just, there are tons of urban fantasy novels. And I, and I knew that, but I, you know, I, I created my, my street team and I wanted to do a giveaway, all these things to try to pull people in, you know, and I, I asked everyone, you know, on Twitter and Facebook, Instagram, Tumblr, like, hey, if you want to be on my street team, and ideally, you know, for your first street team, a lot of people, they just basically take everybody that wants to join the street team. And this is why I would tell you to not do that. <laughs> okay. So I, I had tons of people join my street team. 
I'm going to say only about like 20% actually did anything. Mm-hmm. And so that was frustrating. Um, Real quick, when you say street team, help me out here. What exactly are you, are you referring to? So, so a street team is, is a group of people. Now, everyone can do it differently. But what I wanted to do is, so I, I created this, this group on Facebook. And I yeah. uploaded all the promotional stuff that I've been using. And I gave everybody a free copy of or an e-copy of my book. Mm. So what you, what you want to do is you want to have them all read your book. Yeah. And then on release day, leave a review on Goodreads and Amazon. Ah. But what they have to do is, you know, because you need that verified purchase so that Amazon doesn't strip that review away. Yeah. They have to agree to purchase that book on release day so it's verified. Right. On release day, they will leave a review. But within that process, and this is how it's different among everybody, is that you you can do like another giveaway for your street team if you want to. But I wanted mine to like go out there and like on their own Tumblrs and Instagrams and Facebook to just promote my novel because you know they might have reach that I don't have. Yeah. And so before it all started, I was like, oh, this is perfect i have all these people they want to do it and and as the street team you know team leader you have to monitor all that because i gave them all a free copy of the book and within my disclaimer of signing up on my street team was like you'll have to do this you know a b c d and e like this is what you should be doing if you want to do it that's great sign up if you don't want to i understand but don't sign up and then not do anything just for a free copy of a book and you know that's what happened. So I, so so I I learned a lot. And yeah, even though it, it sucked, but at the same time, I'm like, okay, well now I know what to do and what not to do next time. Yeah. How so, many people were in your first team? How many people did you have? It was well initially there were like forty five people that signed up. Wow. So to me, as and again, this is I was realistic. This is I was like, this is my first book. Nobody really knows my writing style yet. Nobody really, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm on Twitter a lot, but not everyone knows like my material. So I was like, that's still a good number in my opinion. Yeah. And, and about, I would say about 20% actually partook. Mm. So <clears throat> yeah, but I, I feel like a street team is still good for everyone because not only yeah. because I, I did a blog last week or two weeks ago about what to do, what not to do for a street team and, Somebody asked me, you know, what's the benefit of of a street team, and I gave her reasons why. I was like, well, you obviously didn't read my, my blog post, but <laughs> it's like, I mean, right here, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But let me let me tell you why. And she's like, well, that's not good enough. I'm like, well, I'm not here to convince you. I'm just saying this if you yeah, want I'm not to do selling a street you team, a street team, <laughs> yeah. Like, like yeah, you're doing an like, infomercial for them or something. Exactly. I'm not getting. I wish I was getting paid for this, but I'm not. We like, cut a boat in half. This is a great <laughs> know, right? And she was like, how does that benefit me as a reader? One, you, you're you helping another writer. She's like, why would I want to do that? I'm like, I don't know. Why do you buy J.K. Rowling's books? Or why do you read Sarah J. Mass? I don't know. You're you're helping another writer. I don't like, it's not, honestly, it's not a hard, hard concept. So I just kind of stopped tweeting. Because I'm not going to get into an argument. Yeah. You Twitter gotta be careful over. with that stuff, man. <laughs> it can, you do. It can escalate I, I, quickly. It really, uh, it can, because I spent eight years in the Navy and I know how to defend myself. So yeah, uh, yeah. So I just, I had to stop because I'm like, I'm. This is just pointless. Like, she obviously doesn't want to be a street team. I, I'm not asking her to be on my street team. Some people just don't get it. You don't have to do it. This just like all the research that I did months prior saying you should make a street team for your book yeah that's a, i mean it's a great idea I, I can't imagine why it wouldn't be beneficial to have people pre-read read your book and give you reviews on the day it's released i mean mm-hmm. reviews are like the lifeblood of of writers for i mean like we just talked about they're so important for us um even 20 percent of out of 45 i mean the 80 20 rule 20 percent of the people do 80 percent of the work all, all the time anyway so it's like yeah kind of can expect that but that's still more than if you didn't didn't have a street team whatsoever you know exactly so. exactly i'm gonna check out that blog and then i'm gonna i'm gonna tweet you 
How does how does this help me? <laughs> Excuse me, this know. doesn't help me at all, sir. Did you read it? No. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'll oh, just no. refer back to the blog post. Like reread, reread. <laughs> this uh, sounds this is too difficult. Then it's probably too difficult for you to understand. So don't do it. Like it's it, it's not really a hard concept, honestly. It's 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 fun. It's interactive. Plus, you get you get to read a book before it's yeah. just like when a traditional published writer sends out all those arcs like yep. you're reading that book with the intention of leaving a review on release day it's not any different right how did um so so besides the street team what else did you uh get into for for marketing uh so that that was probably the biggest thing it it's just kind of like also you know time tweets a lot of people talk about time tweets and I didn't really necessarily follow that. I just kind of like once a week on the same day, I just kind of like, oh, like Augur of Shadows, February 26th. Um, because I'll be honest with you, on Twitter, it's really bad when people do nothing but promote their own book. Like there's no other content and it's annoying. And I'll be honest, I will either block you or mute you. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's, it's, it's no difficult point. to, I mean, it's hard to kind of, it fills up your, um, your timeline like crazy. And it's just it it's all you see. Yeah. It, it, it's, it's like kind of annoying. buy my book, buy my book. I mean, because you did that, I'm not going to buy your book and I'm not. Well, the also, worst I'm is, gonna... the worst is when they go in your DMs. Like if you follow them yes. and, then, and then immediately you get a DM from them, like, Hey, <laughs> yeah. look at this great book. You're my yeah. friend now. Buy my book. I'm like yeah. what? Thanks for following me. Do you read fantasy? I'm like, yes. When I already know what they're going to ask me, they're like, oh, well, then you would love this. How do you know I would love this? I mean, just there's all all these other subgenres of fantasy out there. You don't know which one I, I prefer. So yeah, it, it's it, just it, such it an abrasive. It's just such an abrasive way of going about it. And I understand that. Like being a self published author is very difficult to, or it's scary for one. So I think a lot of it's based out of fear. Like if I don't get in front of every single person I can, then nobody's going to read my book and I'll be a complete failure. And all of my hard work for all these years, my dream will come crashing down on my head and I will have to go underneath my bed for the rest of my life and the world will end, right? It becomes this miserable, terrible, scary thing. In reality, it's... it's <laughs> I mean, that's pretty accurate, right? No, 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 it is. <laughs> no, that's like, that's on point. I'm like, I, I felt all those emotions. I've yeah. I've said all that stuff, but at the same time, like I one thing I learned is that I don't like I don't right now I'm not making a living off my writing, so I don't have that stress. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not dissing anybody that that's how they make their money. If if you can make money by doing this, you know that's more power to you. But I make like fifty dollars a month. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean. That that'll pay for the internet, right? <laughs> That's right. <gasps> That's gas for a week. Thanks. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I I totally get it. But don't don't auto DM me. That's that's just in bad taste, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, it's one of the reasons I'm doing this is because like we have to we have to figure out better ways to help each other out. And I think like helping other people get their book out there is a much better way like helping other helping everybody else raise raise the level is a much easier way to to promote yourself and i don't think people are people aren't necessarily buying books anymore they're buying the author like there's so many books there's so many great artists and cover arts and like writers out there that people want to buy from who they know and like that's why i'm doing this because i feel like if they know who you are they know who somebody else like if they know who the author is, what they're about, like deep down, why they're telling this story, then they're gonna be like, "Yeah, I need to read that book," as opposed yeah. to being like, uh, "Read my book. You like fantasy? You'll love this." Yeah, you're gonna love it. That that's a very good point because you really are, you know, you're you're putting money into a brand. Like uh, yeah. that's that also goes along with all the research. If a writer takes it really seriously and realizes that it's not that you're just writing a book you're also building a brand like yeah. how do you want to be how do you want to, and this is why doing stuff like this is really great because you really do get to know a writer is 
do you want to be a part of that brand? Like, I mean, it really, it, yep. it's a simple idea, but it really, it's a lot of work. Mm-hmm. And when people see that you, in, like you interview other writers and then the fact that they know that you're a writer because you help others, like they will also look at your book. So it's like, it's a two way street. Right. And that was it's a really important ingenious. thing. It, <laughs> it really is. <laughs> like finding you know, I know a lot of people on Twitter that only talk to certain people that have certain number of followers I'm just like okay I'm not like that I'll talk to whomever wants to talk about my book and, and this at the same time like we can talk about your book it, it's not it's yeah. not just like Jacob Rundle time it could be you know both yeah so that's, that's, the, that's the whole part of building a relationship like we forget that that the internet's a great place for building relationships. It can obviously be a very um, tumultuous and like dangerous, volatile place. But mm-hmm. in the end, it's li- it's a literal it's a literal uh, translation of we all think we're this this uh, you're talking about like existential and metaphysical, like we're this oneness in the universe, right? Mm-hmm. On Earth, we're literally in this oneness on the internet, and if we could just realize that, that we're all connected via this whatever however the internet works i have no idea (laughs) if we could just realize that we're literally connected and be nice to one another then Mm -hmm. the world could be a whole lot better a whole lot nicer place to live in and we could all just we could all be happy we could all do the things we love to do without being you know attacked or criticized or yeah whatever it is it's and also to go along with that if people would just realize that there's enough room oh. and space for everybody to be successful. Yeah, man. And, and that you can really, I don't say anything on Twitter, but you can, I mean, it's because I'm on Twitter the most, you can really see who actually cares about helping other writers. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> like somebody will tweet something like, oh, I don't have any experience with this. If I go on there, like, oh, you know, A, B, C, and D, you, you can do these, like, these three to four or five things. But then there are other people like, oh, yeah, that well, that's really difficult. I had trouble with that. I'm like, how are you helping anybody? Yeah. Like, are you like, do you actually care or did you just want your name to be on like your comment? On your name to thread. be on that? Yes. And that's so annoying. And there's so many times when I've had to back away from Twitter. I'm like, I can't do this. Yeah. Because I, I'd rather help somebody than just like have my name out there in the midst. It's just it's annoying. Yeah, it can it can definitely get to be one of those places where if we if we let it and drag our drag our own thoughts down, and I do try to I do try to tweet up here as much as as much as possible, but I'm pretty nonsensical, so I also <laughs> send out some pretty stupid shit. <laughs> yeah, that, that's fun. But, but it's fun. I think that's my brand. <laughs> no, that that really like that is your brand. That's the type of person that you are, and I see I feel like that's way more authentic than someone who puts up this facade like. Oh my God! I'm here to help every writer. I'm like, I don't see your name anywhere. I don't help you see. I don't see you helping anybody other than posting your damn book. Yeah. Every like, oh my God! But it's such every a good book, day. Jacob. <laughs> it's so Jeez. good. Uh, if you would just every, read it. <laughs> yeah, like you don't just, you don't have to tweet your book to me every day. They're like, but but you have almost six thousand followers. So what? Like, so what? That doesn't mean I want your picture up on my thread for, like, the 20th time this week. (laughs) Marketing. It's it's (laughs) it's how we market, man. It's It's, it's a fickle bitch is what it is. It is. It can be (laughs) difficult. So how let's let's talk about writing. So when you when you do you obviously said you had a nine to five job. So you're working Monday through Friday, nine to five. When do you find time to write these stories? Um, so if I have any downtime when I'm at work, don't tell my, my work. <laughs> um, other than that, <laughs> great, they're listening. I'm fired. No. I yeah, there's, like, a, there's a truck parked outside. <laughs> oh, oh, great, great. Um, but by working the nine to five job, it forces me to use the free time that I have to actually get writing done. And another thing that I've come to learn is, and I, I put this tweet out like last week, you, I was like, you do not have to pump, in my personal opinion, you don't 
have to pump out a book every two months. I feel yeah. like people, they, they don't give time for their stories to actually be out in the world before they throw another one because they feel like the more books they have, that they're going to, I mean, they could make more money. They could, or they could not. And then that could crush you. And then why did I waste all that time? Yeah. What's the Netflix mentality, man? You, yes. they make, yeah. you, you make a series and you got all 13 episodes available like that. And it's like yeah. that binging culture. But you can't, you don't binge read. I, I mean, you, you can read one book, I feel like, in my opinion. You read one book and you read it like middle of the night. You're reading it all the time. But you have to give it time to process. Literature is not the same as television. There's there's much more processing that has to go on. We're like literally downloading thousands and thousands and thousands of words into our mind and our subconscious that typically have a deeper meaning that if we're just like reading 20 books about the same thing in like a short period of time, our brain becomes in, inundated with like we can't we can't process it all. It's just not possible. And then you yeah. hate the book. <laughs> like screw this. Yeah. Then you leave that two star review or that exactly that, that two star rating, yeah, <laughs> without yeah. anything. Oh, yeah, it's I guess it's personal preference, and that's why I'm taking my time with book two because I'm not just gonna release it. I was like, book one was just released, and yeah. I mean, I'm happy that people are already asking about book two, but I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. I was yeah. like, do you realize because not everybody that reads is a writer, so they don't really know everything that goes into it yeah it's like the number of hours i mean there are times when i'll come home from work and then i'll stay up till two or three in the morning if i feel like it writing yeah but sometimes i don't <clears throat> and it's like it's it's draining it is yeah it's a lot of creative energy it is and it, how do it you out. how do you how do you get into a flow of creative energy i mean when you sit down after a long day at work, how do you find yourself into a flow? I, I'm going to have to, I would say that the, this is where the military uh, training has really, it made me have the ability to really switch my mind onto something. And then it's not really forced because I'm used to it. I mean, I did, I was in the Navy for eight years, so I'm able to like focus on writing and then I kind of just automatically get in the flow. Because I know inside my head, I'm like, okay, by 11 o'clock or midnight, I want to have these number of words done or pages or whatever. And then once it hits that time, I'm done. So it, it kind of mm. like puts me in like go mode. And then I just, yeah. I just do it. Wow. That's I mean, it's discipline, right? Like if just sitting yeah. down and deciding to do something and then being able to – being able to focus is like one of the most difficult things, especially now. There's so many different – I mean, trying to stay off Twitter for one, trying to like yeah. manage all the other things you do. Um, do you have a goal of words per day or per week that you try to hit? Um, usually, like I try to keep it. I know it's kind of some days I don't care about as long as I write at least one word. But then like the next day, <laughs> I'm like, oh, I only wrote a word. Um, I got one. <laughs> yeah, I got one word. Um, I try to do minimum of. 2,000 words a day. Yeah. And I mean, it's not, it's not super difficult. I mean, some days it's harder than most, but at the same time, I don't like beat myself up if I don't hit that because it's a, it's a personal thing. Yeah. And, and I am just, I'm honestly like, I want to enjoy the writing process. I'm not going to stress myself out to where I lose sleep when tomorrow's another day if that means that my book book two comes out a day later than expected then it just comes out a day later like yeah it's not the end of the world you know this isn't all of shadows <laughs> <laughs> we yeah. don't know that man we don't know that are you is, is like the goal to be able to write full time and quit the day job um i actually had the opportunity to take some time off and I guess I'm more of a vacation. And I, I was in that mindset. It's like, okay, I'm going to treat this as if I was a full-time writer. Um, I didn't have to go to work. And I'm just going to do it. I hated it. I would be one of those people. I hated it. Because yeah. that is honestly when I was the least productive I've ever been. I, I don't know why. I guess it's more because I'm used to working the nine to five. 
and then like I said, my mind switches. It's writing time. It's more like a machine. Yeah. And I didn't have that. I didn't have that. I didn't put that on myself. I'm like, oh, I have all day to write. I didn't end up writing. <laughs> didn't write. Yeah, I the structure the structure helps, right? Yeah, yeah. It really, for me it does. And some people like they they love it. They want to be able to stay home all day and write. I'm just like I'm just not one of them. And I yeah. that that's okay. I, not everybody has to do that. Yeah. Uh, so if you don't have to conform to someone else's ideas and what your process is. Right. No. Yeah. I'm like a toddler. I have to have a. I have very structured. I have to have my day plan, my nap time, my bed, when I when I get my snack. <laughs> like if, <laughs> if it's if I don't have my juice box after nap time, I'm not getting anything done. Oh, <laughs> it's, it's game oh, over. God. Series oh, watch out for you. <laughs> That's right. Get this man a juice, box. a juice box. <laughs> Mom, meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> write yeah. those, write those five thousand words now. I gotta do it, man. Yeah, and uh, the writing thing, it, it is a whole personal because some people can like write extremely fast, and other people will take like they'll write a few words and then they'll edit that line, and then they'll go back like. I don't know how people do that, but I just, are you somebody who just like sits there and writes and writes and writes and writes and writes and then you go back when you're at the end of your time and and edit everything or do you just leave it for the, when the whole book is done? I I try to wait until the whole book is done because like I said, your story, whether you um, outline it or not, your story is still going to evolve and still going to change. Yeah. I don't know one one writer who says that they never change anything from their outline. I think I think that's complete BS. Um, so by going like after doing that writing session, like I don't know, I just feel like that's again that's just too much stress. That when you're writing yeah. that during that session, you're some people or I would be like, oh, I gotta go back and edit all this. I'm like, no, just wait till it's all done. So then you can yeah. just do one wave. Well. You're going to do multiple edits, but just one continuous wave per edit session, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does. Yeah, but it, and I guess the only thing with that is if you like, you have to change, if you have massive changes, like if there's something in the beginning that doesn't tie into the end. I remember for the first first one I did, I was like, oh my God, the ending doesn't fit the beginning. <laughs> like, what the hell am I going to do? I mean, it can be an easy fix, but it can also be really scary. So, yeah. <clears throat> but, yeah, that's an... Yeah. Because if, if you change it, if you're not careful, and even though, like, the beginning matches the ending, that doesn't mean that it's still cohesive with the whole story. You know what I mean? Right. Like, it's just... You, that's why I wait till it's all done. <laughs> it's yeah. like, just like, oh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Well, Jacob, man, I, I really appreciate your time on the Uniweb interview show uh, with me. And, and Augur of Shadows is out now on Amazon. Um, you can buy it in paperback and uh, digital download. Is there anything you want to leave the writing community with or anybody out there watching? Um, final last words? Not ever, but like for... <laughs> <laughs> um, just, it, you just You just have to enjoy it. Enjoy the writing process, even like the awful editing revision part. It's still, it's part of the whole package and Mm -hmm. do not compare yourself to other people ever or try not to because we're human. Just don't do that because you're, it's going to hurt you in the end. Yeah. Be you, be as you as you can be. It's awesome. That's right. Well, Jacob, thanks again for your time, man. I really appreciate it. Links to all your work will be um, in the video description below. Thanks for coming on the Uniweb show, bro. Thanks for having me. (laughs) Internet high five. All right. right. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you would, subscribe to the channel and hit that notification for the bell. Uniweb, we love you. Love you. Love you. Uniweb.